Don't worry. Yeah. Hello? Hello! Good morning. So good to see all of you. I'm so glad to be here this morning with you. It's a real honor to be able to speak at this conference today. Uh, I hope we're going to have a little fun and be interactive as well. Um, my co content today is about social commerce. Uh, I should start by introducing myself. My name is Peter Leach. I'm a partner with a consulting company called The Partnering Group. Uh, my background and what I'll be drawing upon today is uh, my experience in e-commerce. As chief marketing officer of a company called Online Shoes, competed against Zappos in the U.S. in the footwear market online. Also at uh, Hanover Direct, one of the U.S.'s largest direct-to-consumer retailers, mostly in the homewares but also apparel business. And then uh, most uh, interestingly, maybe some of you will know the brand Chico's. It's a women's apparel business, actually has three different brands, and I ran the e-commerce business there. Uh, today, of course, I'm here to speak to you purely about social commerce, and I want to get deep into that. So <clears throat> I have to say that just to start off, I'm going to be sharing with you some information from a study conducted in the U.S., but it's got to be looked at through the Brazilian lens. And I realize that uh, the world here is different. You use different tools. Uh, you are a different country with different cultural approach to social, but I hope that this is helpful. And I do think that um, although you're a highly ORCA-driven business here, I mean, this is an ORCA nation, right? Uh, but Facebook is coming on fast. Uh, it's been amazing to watch the dynamic growth of Facebook use in your country. Last month alone, Facebook users in Brazil grew by 2 million. That's really fast. By a show of hands, how many of you are signed on to ORCID? Okay, pretty big. How many of you are signed on to Facebook? Whoa, okay, I think that was more. So maybe that's an indicator right there that the U.S. the leaders of a lot of social and e-commerce are highly involved with Facebook, so I know who I'm talking to now. Okay. Also on Twitter, and I'll be talking about more than just Facebook, on Twitter, a lot of growth here in Brazil. You're the number three uh, country for use of Twitter overall, surpassing many other larger nations, uh, and third behind the U.S. and U.K., and uh, growing tr tre tremendously, fastest growth rate on Twitter overall. So anyways, Brazil is social, right? But you all knew that already, right? You're social. Okay. So let me tell you a little bit about this study that we did. This was done just a couple of months ago. It was a study done in the U.S., comprehensive study done with about 1,700 U.S. consumers, asking them some key questions about what do you actually do in terms of using social platforms for shopping? What do you actually do? Not what do we think you're going to do or what do we want you to do, but what do you do? Why do you do it? And what, do you, what would you like to get from retailers and brands in this world? And so this was conducted with a company called Comscore, a world-leading analytics company, and an agency, an association, excuse me, called shop.org. And of course, I was the primary author of the study. Okay, so that sets up the study. What I'm going to talk to you about specifically today, social commerce. I want to talk a little bit about mobile and how that's transforming this whole world. It's getting mashed up with social. And so you have this new term. You all need new jargon, right? We need new jargon all the time. Motial, right? So you'll hear this coming around. And then we'll talk a little bit about location-based. So people logging in to locations through social. And then finally, I want to wrap it up with some tips. Just ideas that I'm seeing as people are using social to drive their business from a commerce standpoint and just show you some examples primarily from the U.S., but uh, hopefully of interest to you. So what is social commerce? So I'm going to do an exercise here, and rather than tell you what social commerce is, I'd like you all to stand up. Everybody, up, 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 up. Okay, this is social media. Turn to your friend and say hello. Is anybody next to you? Say hello, everybody. Hello, hello. You don't have to say hello to English. You can say whatever you want. <laughs> and I'll say hello to all of you, so I'm, I'm the big node. Hello to everyone. You say hello back to me, right? Hello. Okay, this is social media. Okay, now everybody take some money, some reals, out of your pocket, and give it to your friend. Just, okay, that's social commerce, right? Okay, sit down, that's it. All right. So that, this is the difference, right? And, and many of us in e-commerce, right, have been frustrated because 
social media has been huge, but where's the money? I'm not here to tell you that we figured it out, that we have sorted it out and it's instantly been changed from a world where there's a lot of engagement, a lot of branding, but not a lot of money, but there are some things that I want to talk to you about which show some light towards more shopping, more commerce. So I want to talk a little bit about that. Okay, back one slide. Okay, so here's the first piece of data. The biggest question we wanted to ask is, are consumers engaging with retailers and brands for shopping through social media? Are they engaging? Meaning things like, out of the total online population that we studied, which is the total online user base of the US, what percent were our, our members of, of social platforms? That's a nice one to get, that was 77%. So 77% of the people in America that we studied who had an online access were on a platform. Okay, that's good. How many of them followed a retailer, meaning they, they, they signed up to be a fan or, or a follower? 54% said they had followed a retailer on, on one of those platforms. That was very high. We were very pleased with that because there were some questions about whether they would want to interact with brands, with companies. Of that, 81% of those that followed browsed, posted comments, or made a purchase straight through, clicked through and bought. That was very enticing to us because we hope that all these numbers move up and that'll drive more and more commerce. Today, um, we also found that the number of uh, retailers they follow on average is 6.3. So it's not just that they sign up with one retailer, on average, 6.3. Some people are signing up for as many as 20 different retailers. They want the information. Sorry, having a little delay here. And um, so here's some of the behavior they're actually doing. So, for example, on Facebook, 56% said they click through to the website. That's the kind of action you want in e-commerce. 51% said they browsed or researched a product or service. 43% said they posted comments. And most importantly, 28% of those that followed said that they went ahead and purchased on Facebook. And all of these numbers are higher for Twitter. We thought that was interesting. More commerce interest through Twitter, more interest in clicking through and buying. Um, and then retailer blogs had the highest level of purchase activity, but we did find that the percentage of the audience that involved themselves with retailer blogs was very small, much smaller than the other two ways of method, methods of connecting with uh, the brand. Okay, um, and how are people doing it? How are they building their fan bases? Well, we're, we're trying to understand this better by asking consumers what they want. And what they said is 56% said they wanted deals and promotions you probably would have expected that. 49% um, said that they were seeking product information, though. That was interesting to us, that they, they just want to know what's hot, what's coming out next. They want to get previews. They want to understand what's going on with the products you sell. But they also want a connection, and this is an example of two retailers that I, I think did a really good job. On the left-hand side, you'll see Macy's. They did a program called Thank a Mom where they connected um, charitable contributions to a way that their shoppers could thank their mom publicly through Facebook. And they got tremendous adoption through this. And it also creates an emotional bond. The second piece was Kohl's, a department store in the US as well. And they also had a donation process uh, a program, but it was through school. So you could donate to your local school through this campaign. And I thought both of them represented a way to take it beyond just the commercial. The big question, though, we wanted to ask in the survey, though, was would they buy more online if they had the opportunity through Facebook or through Twitter? And this said that 35% of consumers, when asked would they purchase through a website if it were available through Facebook, like directly through Facebook or through Twitter, 35% said they would. Uh, through Twitter, uh, they 32% said they would buy through. So there's a high purchase intent through these channels. And you'll see that a lot of companies are putting direct shopping tabs into their Facebook pages. That's an example from JCPenney, who has a pretty elaborate shopability straight through Facebook. A lot of people are adding this to their sites. So 
Sorry for the delay here. Okay, so that's what we learned in terms of commerce, and we were really enthused about the amount of uh, interaction that consumers had with these brands and how much they were willing to actually shop through them. The next trend I want to talk to you about is mobile and social and how they're combining. We studied this through the survey as well. And what we found in particular was that social was being accelerated by mobile. So people are consuming social so much more because it's in their face, it's in with them in, when they shop in stores. Um, this is an example of uh, how frequently they use these platforms. And then on the right hand side, you'll see how frequently they use them on a mobile phone. The percentage of Facebook users that said they visited Facebook once a day or more was 69%. And of that, 34% said they did it on a mobile phone. So it's the omnipresence, it's having that phone with you all the time that is driving so much more use. And look at YouTube, same thing. Twitter, extremely high mobile phone use. So this is going to be an interesting connection for us. You know, as you launch mobile phone enabled websites, e-commerce sites, how do you tie that to your social? I think it's going to be increasingly important as people shift their social to the mobile phone. This was also an interesting fact that came out. 56%, 55% of the total US online population said they had used their mobile phone to look up a customer review. And a lot of that is happening while they're in the aisle in the store. So that's going to be a real changing of the, the power structure between the consumer and the retailer as people can directly access reviews through their mobile phone. Okay. Last trend, and then we'll get on to the tips. Location-based. This is all the stuff with Foursquare and Gowalla, um, even uh, location-based tools like Yelp. What we wanted to understand is how are consumers adopting this tool? What percentage? What, what kind of person is adopting this tool? And, and this is where you're going to a retail location, a restaurant, or a store, and you're checking in. You're locating yourself through, through Facebook or or, or Foursquare, or Gowalla, or some of these other tools. It's kind of early stage in the US. This were the findings. Um, the awareness was pretty high for things like Foursquare. 16% of online Americans, they knew about it, but only 8% were users. So still a, a small adoption base, but what we did find when we tabulated who they were, that these are the same people that are really heavy users of Facebook, heavy users of Twitter, highly influential people because they're technically savvy and they're out and about and they're highly social. So our takeaway was this is not the hottest thing in terms of your total playbook for social commerce, but you should be involved in it if, if you can because these are the key people that are highly uh, influential. They're the elites. <laughs> Okay, tips. So now what do I do? So here's the quick summary. So consumers are following brands. They're following retailers. And so far, they're not opting out. 36% of the people quoted said they had opted out at all. So basically flip that around. A huge percent have not opted out of a single relationship that they've made with a retailer or brand online. Now that will change over time, but right now it's a fantastic time to build your Facebook community and get that connection. So build your Facebook now and the power is really not in getting people to go to your Facebook page or your Twitter location. That's not where the action is. The action is getting your message into their feed because it's like email. It's low converting email, but it is like email. Also, these posts and these actions create power for natural search or search engine optimization. We're finding that people who are doing a good job at social commerce are lifting their rankings in Google because they're getting consumers to speak about their brand, which drives up rankings. So get in the feed. It's a VIP thing. I'm not sure whether this is uh, the right language. So VIP in, in America is the very important person. These are the best customers. You want to take care of them. What we found through study after study is that your Facebook fans, your Twitter followers, these are your very best customers. They've sought you out, so you have to treat them that way. People who execute a unique pricing promotion and product information campaign to these customers get the most bang for the buck, and they turn those followers and the advocates. 
Here's an example of just how to do that. And I thought Nordstrom did a great job. Basically, when you land on their Facebook page, they say, like our page, and we'll make an exclusive relationship with you. Like our page, and you'll get exclusive content. Like our page, and you'll connect with other members. And you have to like them to get access. This is called like gating, and it's really critical to making the right relationship and keeping that dialogue going. Okay, the other finding that's really come out as we've been working in this field is that it's all about product. You gotta get product in front of the customer. They care about having a dialogue with you, but they're really looking for the information about what you sell. This is a great example of a company called The Foundry. They're constantly putting images of beautiful product, new product, fresh product. Other retailers are doing previews, product that may not even be live yet, that they're allowing their customers to view or rate or comment upon. This is what they're looking for. Another key tip, edge rank. Um, I don't know if uh, edge rank has been broadly discussed in, in Brazil yet. It's, it's becoming a pretty hot topic in America. Edge rank is a fancy term for the algorithm that drives what gets shown to a consumer on Facebook and what gets buried on the back page. Those who master it show up, those who don't wind up in the spam folder. Um, and it's an algorithm they use that has three components. One is affinity, so you're posting something. How much of a relationship do you have to the consumer that's reading it, and how, inter how much interaction do they have with what you've posted? Two is weight. Weight means do you have an image or a video? And then time decay, how old is the, is the posting that you've put up? Those three things together through a complex algorithm decide and determine whether what you post to your fans are gonna show up, and that's what we're all there for. So um, here's an example just of the screen. What I'm talking about is you have the top news feed in Facebook and you have the most recent. Well, most recent is basically spam. 95% of consumers don't even go there. So you're posting away, you're sending them messages, they don't see it, it's just flowing by in the back. Um, so it's really critical to add images and video and to really get edge cases. Edge cases are when a consumer acts upon your uh, posting. So encourage them to comment, uh, induce them or entice them if you need to use promotion, but that's gonna be a driver of how you get to that front page. Okay, socialize your website. This has um, really been explosive lately. I'm starting to see more and more companies. What they're doing is taking the next step, which is to bring Facebook and other social platform data into their website. Instead of looking for the customer on Facebook, they're bringing it into their website. So they're using Facebook's graph API tools to wire into their website and thereby allowing social information to be provided to the customer. Now, I think that's really what the customer wants us to do is to say, uh, um, hey, I'm shopping. I like this jacket. I wonder if my friends have commented either on this retailer or this brand. What do they think? And give them that kind of access. That's what they would love for us to figure out. And the API tools are starting to let us do that. An example that I love is what Amazon is doing. Uh, this may be a little hard to see for those of you in the back, but this is a section. If you, if you allow them to integrate with your Facebook account, they'll start to provide you things about what's popular among your friends on Facebook, sort of drawing in and giving you recommendations from a totally different viewpoint. These aren't what they know about you, this is what your friends, and this is what you say to your friends, hey, what are you reading? So I thought this was truly powerful and a great example, and I think it's really moving the needle for, for Amazon. Ah, and then not to, uh, least but not last, is social games. Social games have gone crazy. Uh, it's just amazing how explosive it is. Video games, when I was a kid, was what you did if you were you know, a teenager and uh, you had some time to burn. Now in America, the average age of the consumer who plays a social game, like a Farmville, is a 40-year-old woman. It's the person with the power of the purse strings and the power of the wallet of the household. And, and that is a really different world for us as marketers because that is a person we want to connect with. So how do you use social games to connect with that person? You know you've got 50% of people who are members of Facebook saying that they've played a social game, 
40% of all the time spent on Facebook is spent playing social games. It's incredible. So how do you convert those uh, players into fans and the customers? Well, here are some examples of uh, retailers doing just that. Uh, on the right here, you can probably see this. It's Office Depot. And they've created a game around something they want to induce the customer to do, which is to help um, someone who's a senior in high school, early in their school days, going to college, plan how they will lay out their room at college, their dorm room, right? And so they want to do this because the next step is you'll buy something from them, but they have to make it a game to induce this customer to engage. So this is a game where you can answer quizzes about you and about what you like and don't like, and that helps you build your, your, uh, your uh, dorm room out. And I think they got tremendous engagement through that. Macy's, again, a big leader in Facebook execution, had their own game called Fashion Director, and where they invited consumers to play with product and images and create their own line and then share that with the audience on Facebook and, and they could win prizes and offers. And that was uh, great, it was a fantastic way to engage. Um, and then finally on the upper left, that's an example of something that uh, my company, Social Shopping Labs, did for a client where they were a hair care and beauty care company and we wanted to make it more playful. You know, giving people coupons is fine, but how do you get people engaged? So this is uh, hidden in her hair were offers that you could scratch away and, and reveal, and then they could click through and buy directly through the game. Um, and they use this primarily to get people to like them, to grow their fan base. So games are the way to lock people in in that way. And then if they, if they like the application, they'll actually give you their email address as well, which you can use to build your email file. And it's a great email address because people don't put fake email addresses into, into Facebook. Okay, so that's it. I covered off a bunch of data and gave you some tips, and I really thank you for your time and your attention and your patience with my English. I appreciate all of that. Thank you very much. I really hope that you'll reach out to me during the conference. I'm here to meet you. If you can't meet with me here and you'd like to talk, that's my contact details, and thank you very much for your time. Obrigado. Obrigado.